Hey everyone, welcome to Encore, and today we're back to basic, but this time we're doing liquid foundation. Keep watching. Hey everyone, it's Corin, and you're watching Encore Makeup. Blend, blend, blend. Hi Corin, stop using my lippy stick. Hey everyone, welcome back. So recently I posted a video, it's a back to basic video, and it covers um, application of cream foundation. So today I'm going to do the same exact thing, but we're going to talk about liquid foundation, because I know a lot of you guys out there use this liquid foundation. Now, um, as far as the in-depth part of the video, I'm going to go over the steps that I usually take to make sure that the liquid foundation lasts a long time because liquid foundation is probably kind of like the hardest to wear as far as the foundation formulation unless it's silicone base which makes liquid foundation last a lot longer because of the silicone base and I know a lot of you guys are sensitive to silicones and therefore you use water-based foundation so by doing the steps uh, or the extra steps you can actually you know, make your foundation last a lot longer, um, prevent it from caking and, you know, over applying basically. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. Now, I already moisturized my skin, as you can see. I have oily skin, but I'm also going to be using oil control lotion. All right, and I'm just going to apply this right now. So that way, as I'm talking about the other steps, the uh, oil control lotion is going to get a chance to be absorbed by my skin. So I'm just going to apply this. And this is going to help the oils that my skin produces but not get rid of them because I need the oils that my skin produces to make the liquid foundation stick to my skin. That's going to help a lot. So don't think that you're not going to need oils from your skin because you're going to need it. You need the oils from your skin to act like as a binder, okay? To make sure that your foundation will last longer on your skin. Okay, so while that's uh, sitting on my skin and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give it time for the skin to absorb, I'm going to go through a few things that you can do in addition to like preparing your skin. If you have not seen my prep and prime video on how to prep and prime skin prior to makeup application, make sure to watch that. Um, but basically I'm going to apply my favorite face primer and this is Smashbox Photo Finish and Clear. I like the small too because this goes a long way. All right, I think it's $16 at Sephora, but it takes forever to use it up. And of course, um, I recently discovered Professional by Benefit Cosmetics and I'm just going to apply this in areas that I have larger pores um, and uh, that's just a pore filler okay so it's going to take care of the areas that the uh, primer is not going to cover because the primer is just going to prime the skin and initially fill in some fine lines uh, deeper scar marks some of the uh, some of the uh, pores but of course the uh, professional is really the key tool the key weapon <laughs> to uh, cover that and then of course if you guys need some concealing then use a concealer and conceal in areas where you need concealing first okay so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to prep my skin and I'll be right back okay so I already prepped and primed my skin and I also concealed here and there and I'm ready to apply foundation. So once again, we're going to go over the proper swatching of foundation to perfectly match your skin. Now this is one problem that you will run into when you are buying drugstore makeup. You cannot swatch to match. That's a problem, that's a given. <laughs> that's why a lot of people doesn't really prefer buying foundation in a drugstore because it's, it's really unreliable, the shades. Uh, will probably not match your skin and you're not going to be able to return the product. Most drugstores, they don't take returns on makeup products. So at this point, you know, I, unless, you know, there's a drugstore that you know of that's going to allow you to swatch the product to match your skin tone, 
then definitely add a comment below so that people will know where to go. <laughs> as far as where I am, nobody does. So what I'm going to demonstrate in this video is my Face Atelier Foundation. And I have six, seven, and eight in here. So we're going to do the same thing. Rule of thumb needs to match your neck coloring. So you can see my neck coloring is currently lighter than my face so we're going to need to find a foundation that's going to match the neck coloring. So again the best place to swatch is right here and I'm going to start with the 6 blend step back and that looks really really good okay so I know for a fact that I'm a 6 right now <laughs> but just for fun we're going to try 7 Okay, the 7, I can tell right away, is too red for me. And we're going to try the 8. Okay, and the 8 matches my, my face coloring, but not my neck coloring. See that? So it matches my exactly my face coloring. But we can't go by that. We need to go by the neck coloring. So the closest and the most perfect actually is number six, okay? So again, six can look lighter on your skin, but if it matches the neck coloring, then it's the right color. As opposed to number eight, which just disappeared right into my skin because the coloring is perfect of my face color, but it doesn't match my neck coloring, which is lighter. So six would be the color to go for. Okay, now let's talk about the brush to use. Now you can use a universal foundation brush much like this, okay? It just takes a little bit more effort to really blend and spread them out. But the key thing is like most of these uh, universal foundation brushes are synthetic, okay? That's the key to liquid foundation, is to use synthetic bristles, not natural hair bristles. Because natural hair bristles have a lot of cuticles. If you look at a hair strand in like a microscope, you'll see that it's got a lot of cuticles and they're kind of like scales. And those scales are going to trap colors and products. And therefore, you're going to get a lot more products on the brush that on your skin. So that's why for liquid foundation, liquid products, cream products, it's always ideal to go for synthetic bristles, okay? Um, my favorite uh, brush to use is like a duo fiber, okay? Now the problem, say, with a uh, the most popular probably duo fiber is the 187 from MAC, is that the black fiber on it is goat hair, which is natural bristles. Again, you know, it's got all the cuticles and it's going to hold more of the liquid foundation than it applies on your skin. But the magic is on the white fibers, which is fiber optic, because that's uh, what's going to give you that airbrush look in your foundation, okay? And to get an airbrush looking foundation, you need to stipple it, okay? Don't stipple and swirl. Now I have a brush, and this one is called the Stipple and Swirl brush that's available on my website. Now this brush is all synthetic, okay? So it's fiber optic for the white bristles, and then the black are synthetic, okay? So you don't get the uh, cuticles and stuff like uh, in natural hair. So therefore, you'll get more products in your skin than in the brush itself, okay? So today, I'm going to demonstrate the quickest method of how to apply liquid foundation in your skin without it making or looking cakey and at the same time that's going to cut down your application time which is the stipple and swirl method okay. now if you want to learn a little bit more about the airbrushed uh, finish to foundation which is the stippling method then I have a video on that already make sure to watch it and I also have a video on how to properly stipple and swirl but we're talking about Back to basics on liquid foundation. Okay, so your makeup, your makeup, your skin is already set and primed and prepped and ready to go. And the first thing you're going to do, guys, is once again, you're going to need your refresher spray to moisten the brush. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to use refresher spray, not setting spray, refresher spray, which should only be mostly water. There's no infusions, there's no botanicals, there's no oils whatsoever. And this is Mac Charge water, you can use ABN. So I'm just going to spritz that right on the bristle of the brush. And why do you need to do that? Because what happens is like if your bristles are dry, it's going to absorb most of the liquid. Okay, so it's going to stick to the fibers. As opposed to it being moistened and damp, it's not going to cling to the bristles as much. It's going to pick up the product, but it's not going to cling to the bristles because the bristles 
are moist and damp. Okay, so when you guys are applying liquid foundation, I notice that sometimes you use a sponge, you apply it on, and you get more products on the sponge. So, I mean, that's fine and dandy, and all of you are used to that, but keep in mind that, you know, you're also wasting a lot of products because the sponge is absorbing that, even if you use a wet sponge, okay? And a lot of people do, you know, just the fingers or the hands of application. The problem with that is that you get patching. You get an even application, okay? And not to mention that if you look up close, you'll see fingerprints. <laughs> all over your makeup when it sets, okay, because of course your hands have a lot of fine lines and prints, you know, and fingers have prints and stuff. So, you know, that's the thing, it's like you're going to get streaking, you're going to get patching if you use the hand method. A lot of people are used to that, you know, they've been doing it for years, but, you know, well, <laughs> uh, if you don't notice any difference, then uh, that's fine, if that works for you, all right. Okay, so once again, you don't need a lot of products to cover your skin. Okay, so I'm just going to start with one pump of this, okay? So I didn't know what size is that, like a pea size maybe? Like a, you know, that much. All right, and that's actually plenty, all right? So what you want to do is you basically want to make sure that your bristles are, are covered. If you're using a dual fiber brush like this, make sure that it's just concentrated on the white fibers, as you can see right there, all right? And then once again, we're going to do this in like the T-zone and the cheekbone area where your skin is going to need more products, where it's a little bit more susceptible and exposed to the sun, abrasions, um, exfoliation and things like that all right so just make sure it's evenly distributed right into the bristles of the brush okay so you can see it's not touching the black part what you're going to need to do is stipple this first okay you're going to stipple it right in the forehead area okay just like that just get a nice even um, application again I'm going to pick up some color go down my t-zone right above the lip, right on the chin. Again, I'm stippling this to initially apply the product and then right on the cheekbone. Okay, and I still have a lot of products right into my palette here, okay? So you don't need a lot, all right? So just make sure that the application, the initial application is even throughout the area that you first initially applied, okay? So I still have a lot, as you can see, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-wet my stipple and swirl brush, all right? And then work it out in a swirling motion. So I'm just going to swirl and bring that out. And as you can see, my forehead looks amazing already with just that little small amount of product. Okay, work down the T-zone. Again, I'm doing a swirling now, swirling this throughout. Don't be heavy-handed, okay? I've seen people that are like swirling really heavy like this. Okay, you don't want to do that. You want to just really, just, just if you see just the white fibers touching my face, the black fiber is not even like moving or blending. Okay, it's just there for density, okay? So small circular motion to spread the products out. Okay, you're going to feel that your brush is kind of drying. Just one more, uh, just keep spraying, all right? Just a couple of spritz, all right? Then work on the cheek. Okay, and then step back, look at it, see where you need some more coverage, and then go back to your product, which I still have a lot of, all right? And then once again, okay, I'm just going to make sure that that's evenly distributed right at the tips of the white fiber, okay? And then I'm just going to apply where it's needed more, okay? 
or what I'm going to do really is, is uh, to just use up everything that's in here so that way I'm not wasting any product and again that was just a pump that we put in here we didn't put a lot of products okay you don't need like a dime size or a quarter size of liquid foundation to cover your whole face okay and then once again just go over and make sure everything is covered that you need coverage don't forget the crevices Okay, get to them above the brows and that's one thing I like about my stippling and swirl brush is that you can go over the brows nicely as opposed to the bigger uh, stippling brushes really can't get to the uh, the arch of the brows and especially like the side of the nose in here it's so hard to use those bigger brushes okay So just like that, all right? And then you get an even application using this method. Now, if you're using a uh, universal foundation brush, which is the filbert brush like this one, it's going to take you longer, okay? Because you have to get rid of the streak marks. You have to get rid of the dab marks. You have, you know, so it takes a little bit more effort, but you can achieve, you know, like an even flawless application with it. It just takes a lot longer. To use this without you know to make it like flawless looking almost like airbrush look okay so all right so once you finish the application step back and if you're happy with it then you're ready to set now it's very very important for liquid makeup to set so you set it with powder not with a setting spray Okay, the liquid powder needs to absorb something dry, something powder-like. So you're going to need a setting powder. And I'm going to use my Makeup Forever once again. And I'm just going to use my puff. And again, apply the initial dab right in the area where you initially apply the foundation. Okay. So T-zone cheekbones. Okay, and then using a dabbing motion with a little bit of a roll to it, you need to press the powder right into the product so that the liquid foundation will absorb the powder. And once it absorbs the powder, it's going to set. Okay, if you think you need some more powder in certain areas, do so. Again, if it's too much powder, don't worry about it. Let the foundation absorb the powder, and then you can brush off the excess later. Okay, another trick as well is if you don't like using puffs, you can use a powder brush. Okay, and what you want to do is make sure to press the powder. Don't brush it on. Okay, so make sure you're just pressing the powder right into the skin. All right, all over. Okay, don't worry about the excess because you're going to brush that off later. So right now you're concerned about the foundation setting. So you're setting the foundation. Okay, another tip, once you put the rest of the powders uh, on top of your foundation, like your bronzer, your skin finish, your blush, all right? So once all the powders all like blended and placed, make sure to use your setting spray for that, okay? Just a few spritz, and that's going to set all the powder products on your skin. So you can see it's not cakey, it's not creasing right in my expression lines. It's not cakey, and that's the objective of this video. And you did not use a lot of products. So small product, you know, small amount, can go a long way with liquid foundations. It's just a matter of how to apply it on. So thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.